Most people assume the next wave of chip design will be all about stacking. That means more memory on memory, more cache on logic, and maybe multiple compute dies layered one on top of the other. But what if we're thinking about this too conventionally? What if it's not just about stacking components, but stacking logic in a single piece of silicon itself? Now that's the idea behind a new direction in 3D design. Instead of splitting systems into chiplets and stacking pre-built units, this approach starts from the inside by architecting logic across multiple layers from the very beginning. It's not packaging, it's not HBM, it's not even 3D vCache. It's a new model for how to build and connect logic when you need to control depth and not just width. And what's the most interesting thing? The work here actually starts with FPGAs, 3D FPGAs, but it could be universal. And you know what else is universal? This segue to our sponsor. If you like this content, there are multiple ways to support the channel. You can like and subscribe this video, and many thanks for doing so. There's also a Patreon, which gives you access to our Discord. There's a merchandise store and a newsletter, links in the description. For all of you who do contribute, thank you. You are keeping me well fed. So to understand why layered logic matters, it helps to look at how we build chips today. Most designs are two dimensional. You lay out logic blocks, wire them up, and optimize for area and timing then tape out a flat design. Even when chips are stacked in 2D next to each other, like an AMD Ryzen, or vertically in 3D, such as the HBM or 3D vCache, the logic itself stays flat. What's stacked are the separate dies, each already complete. But 3D integration doesn't have to mean stacking finished parts. It can also mean distributing the logic itself across layers. Now, AMD had a slide about this years ago, showing the different methods of going 3D. At the time, it looked almost magical. But the reality is that thinking in these different ways opens up new choices, if you can build it. You could place related IP blocks above one another to shorten connections. You can even dedicate a layer to routing and reduce congestion on the logic tiers. You can segment timing domains across depth instead of area. It's a completely different optimization space. Now, this is especially interesting in FPGAs, where their regular structure makes them good candidates for a layered design. You're not dealing with handcrafted optimizations or irregular blocks as in analog. You've got tiles, routing grids, and predictable patterns. That makes it possible to model how layering affects performance, as well as chip design re relevant metrics such as wire delay, wire length, and routability. And there's a deeper reason that matters. As chips get more complex, and as chiplet style packaging becomes more common, designers are running into limits. Interconnect becomes the bottleneck. Wire delays stack up. Integration becomes a power problem as much as a logic one. Layered logic could be one answer as a way to bring hierarchy and proximity together without giving up density. It's not about having a new process node. It's about a new spatial axis, a true 3D monolithic design. And the paper I'm pulling this info from doesn't just describe it, they build it. So at a recent conference, I came across a poster from Georgia Tech that laid this out clearly. The author on the stand was Ishmael Youssef, and as I walked up, he was already deep in conversation with people from AMD Xilinx. You know, that FPGA company. Now when I say deep conversation, I mean really deep. Not the usual polite interest, but actually back and forth over how the layering worked, what constraints it imposed, and how you would build a system like this. Aside from being drawn to the paper by the title anyway, having engineers from the FBGA company of AMD piqued my interest in the work even more. The post and paper introduce a tool called Lasagna. It's a system for building and testing 3D FBGA architectures. What stood out is that it doesn't just sketch these architectures on paper or take guesses based on theoreticals. The framework can take a description of a layered FBGA, such as what's on each layer and how they connect, and generate the code that actually designs the chip, a language called RTL, or Register Transfer Level Logic. That's the hardware blueprint used to simulate or fabricate a chip. But Lasagna goes even a step further than that. It also produces a bitstream, a configuration file that programs an FPGA, which lets you test how these stacked architectures behave in practice. That opens the door to questions we haven't had tooling to explore until now. Should all your routing switches live on one layer or be spread across many? Should logic blocks for, and memory be separated by tier? Can you optimize timing by isolating certain resources up or down the stack? These are design decisions you don't even get to make with chiplets. 
but with true layered logic and 3D monolithic design, you can. And that brings us to the hardest part, connecting all those layers together. Now, once you start placing logic on different layers, you need a way to connect those layers together. And it's not just physically with wires or vias, but architecturally. You need to decide where the signals can move between layers, how often that happens, and what kind of hardware supports it. This is one of the hardest parts of layered logic design, and it's the part that the Zanya spends its most time exploring. Now, there are two main strategies here. The first is simple, allow signals to jump between layers at almost any pin. Think of it as like a connect everywhere design. Inputs and outputs can rise or drop directly. It gives the routing algorithms maximum flexibility and makes it easy to place blocks close together. But it does come at a cost. Too many vertical connections create congestion and they burn silicon area. And they also increase timing complexity, especially when signals cut across layers at every conceivable point. The second strategy is the complete opposite. Instead of wiring from any point, signals can only travel vertically at designated junctions, aka switch boxes or on chip network hubs. These are routing hubs and we already have them to handle signal direction in 2D, but now we add a 3D element. In 3D, they act like vertical elevators. This makes wiring more structured and efficient, but it also limits freedom because you don't have them everywhere. The router has fewer options. That can make it harder to find valid or uncongested paths. Lasagna supports both of these models and everything in between. You can restrict vertical links to output pins only. You can mix direct pin access with switch box routing. You can decide how often a vertical switch box appears and where to place them, at regular intervals, at the center, at the edges, or just spread randomly across the chip. It also lets you define routing behavior between layers. When a signal moves up or down, does it stay aligned with its track? Does it rotate? Does it land offset to the next tier? These decisions affect congestion and wire length. They also shape delay, especially on critical paths. These choices aren't possible in conventional chiplets. With fixed interfaces and discrete dies, you can't co-design signal flow across layers. But in monolithic logic, you can. What Lasagna does is gives you a way to test it, to build real architectures with different interlayer models and evaluate what works. Not just what's possible, but what's practical. So far, we've talked about how layered logic opens up new architectural choices, what goes in each tier, how the layers connect, and how signals move between them. But none of that matters much if you can't actually build and test those ideas. That's what makes this work different. It doesn't just describe what 3D logic might look like, it creates a working setup where you can actually evaluate it. The process starts with a description of your architecture. How many layers, what types of blocks go where, how they connect across tiers. You define how switch boxes behave, how routing patterns are applied, and even how vertical connections are distributed across the chip. From there, the system builds a full design layout, such as logic fabric, routing structure, and interconnects. It then turns that into a hardware blueprint. These blueprints are expressed as RTL, or Register Transfer Level Logic. That's a standard format used to describe digital circuits before they're implemented in silicon. Once that's generated, the flow compiles it into a bitstream, the same kind of configuration file you would use to program a physical FPGA. You can then run real workloads on it and see how your layered architecture behaves. That ability to measure actual results in FPGAs is what matters. You can compare designs with two, three, or four tiers. You can try different routing strategies and see how they impact wire length, delay, or congestion. You're no longer guessing, you're actually testing it. The goal here isn't to replace commercial tools, but to explore what chiplet style systems like this can't offer. Truly integrated, deeply customized, 3D monolithic logic with full control over where the signals go and how they get there. That's what this kind of tooling enables. So the team behind Lasagna, once the system was built, they ran it through real world tests. One of the key benchmarks they used was a bitonic sorter. And that's sort of a structured logic circuit that sorts data using parallel compare and swap steps. It's often used in hardware design because it scales well and stresses interconnects. That makes it ideal for testing how layered 3D monolithic logic affects routing, delay, and wire length. Now, starting with wire length, in the 2D layout, long routes are inevitable. But as soon as you add vertical layers, average wire length can drop as much as 48% in a four-tier design. And it's not just because of compression. Layering lets blocks sit directly above each other. That flattens out what used to be sprawling paths and makes local communication truly local. But how about the routing success? 
with limited area and tile counts, the two, a 2D design for a botonic sorter can't complete at all. But move to a three-tier architecture with full vertical connectivity and routing success hits 100%, even under tight constraints. The extra vertical space unlocks paths that simply don't exist in flat 2D layouts. And the third benchmark, delay. In a two-tier design with evenly distributed vertical switch boxes, critical path delay improved by 16.7%. And that wasn't a fluke. Layouts with denser and more balanced vertical routing consistently outperformed those with sparse or perimeter-only connections. It's not just how many vias you add, it's where you place them and how signals are allowed to flow. The best results come from a mixed model. Vertical connections, vertical connections available both at output pins and switch boxes spaced every four tiles. That gave the most flexible routing while avoiding the overhead of a full mesh. Now, of course, trade-offs remain. More layers introduces more complexity, especially in manufacturing. Some configurations, such as output-only vertical links, added congestion and hurt delay. The goal here isn't just to add depth, it's to manage it carefully. But the broader message overall is clear. For the Bitonic Sorter, 3D layering turned an unroutable design into a very successful one. It cut wire length nearly in half and improved performance without a process shrink. Not every workload will see those kind of gains, but for compute patterns that are structured and scale friendly, stat logic changes what's possible. Now, just to be clear here, this wasn't a real 3D chip. It was a model built on an FPGA. And the FPGA is 2D, but it uses tricks to simulate the layers. What it showed was real, that layer logic is not just possible, but powerful. Now, we already know how to stack silicon. We've seen memory on logic. We've seen cache on compute. But those are stacks of components. What this work explored is something deeper, stacking logic itself inside a 3D monolithic design, designing circuits not just across a flat surface, but upward through layers of interconnected logic blocks. Once you do that, everything changes. You can route signals in new ways, break long delays, spread heat, collapse distance between units, and it's a different way of thinking about layout, timing, and architecture. Now, this lasagna project didn't solve everything, but it showed how to start with models, with tests, and with tooling that lets designers test out ideas in three dimensions before the hardware even exists. And that's what matters, because monolithic 3D isn't just about fabrication challenges, it's about the design challenge. And the sooner we start learning how to build across layers, the sooner we're ready to go beyond chiplets. This one started with FPGAs, and AMD Xilinx seemed really interested, but it points to something much bigger. Now, in this video, I only touched on the concept of designing multi-layer logic systems. The related papers and tools go into a lot more detail about the design, the analysis, and the confirmation. I'll put links in the video description. There'll be a much deeper dive aimed at domain matter experts, but if that's you, do let me know down in the comments and we'll see what we can put together. And as always, if you have any research papers you think I should be covering on this channel, hop on over to our Discord channel via Patreon and share with the community what exactly excites you in the silicon design the most.